mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow travelers through the valley of death following the light of life. How many of you consider yourself blessed when you're poor? And by that I don't simply mean that you have one less stake in a week. But when you really feel poor, and many of us haven't felt the poorness of many people throughout the world, but when you really feel strained, and there's things you need to cut out of your life, things that you need to choose over other things because you don't have enough. But how about when you feel poor emotionally and physically because of that and spiritually? Do you enjoy feeling that way? Is that something that you long for, that you hope for, to feel that way? I don't. I really hate when I am so poor emotionally that I feel that I can't hear someone else's problems. I can't be there for them in their struggle because I have nothing left to give. That's when I feel poor. I hate feeling like that. Do you feel blessed when you are hungry? I know when I'm super hungry, I, for one, do get hangry. If you've heard that term of being hungry so much and it makes you angry, and then a common term today is to say that you're hangry. I get that way. I don't like feeling extremely hungry. However, I can't say that I am hungry to the point where I feel like I'm going to die. I may speak like that if I'm being dramatic, but I haven't been hungry to that point. But I've definitely been hungry for other things. Hungry for contentment, hungry for companionship, for, for not feeling sad. Do you feel hungry that way, where you wish that someone else was there with you? You're hungry for attention, you're hungry for compassion, you're hungry for something that you don't have, you want more. Because you feel desperate, alone, and in the, in the grasp of despair. Do you feel blessed, though? Probably not. Do you feel blessed when you weep? Yes, Pastor, I love when I cry my heart out and my, I'm hurting so bad that I can't even put to words the anguish of my soul. Yeah, I feel blessed. No, no. It is a terrible feeling to weep with no control. To not be able to laugh because you're hurting so bad. To grieve because of the terrible things that have come into your life, whether by your own sin or by other things happening around you in the world. It's not fun to weep. And I definitely wouldn't use the word blessed as the first word that I'm thinking of. Do you feel blessed when people are insulting you? They're mocking you. They're tearing down who you are. They're rejecting you. They're throwing out. They don't want anything to do with you. Do you feel blessed then? Do you purposely go into situations where you know you're not the normal perspective? You go into situations where they know, you know they're not going to agree with you so that you can be ridiculed and hated because you just enjoy it that much? No. No. Again, you don't naturally feel blessed in those situations. So the question, I guess, for us to ask then is, what is Jesus talking about? Why does Jesus say that blessed are the poor? Blessed are those who hunger. Blessed are those who weep. And blessed are those who are persecuted, insulted, and excluded, and even hated. How is that a blessing? When, when you wake up in the morning, is, is the first request you have for Jesus that he'll give you some of those things? Lord, I don't want to have as much money. 
I want people to be around me less. I would love to be hungry today. I would love it, Lord, if you gave me a challenge that made me weep. Lord, make people hate me today. Those aren't the first words on our lips. And so as we think about Jesus' words, as he says, blessed are those who go through these things, we need to ask ourselves, why? Why is Jesus commending hardship? And even downplaying and criticizing happiness, joy, peace, and contentment. Because he says woe to them. One thing we always have to begin with, and we who know who Jesus is, we have to recognize that Jesus knows us. He knows what's best for us. And if he says something that doesn't seem quite right, it's probably more right than we realize. Because our own nature is telling us that what Jesus says is wrong. So why does Jesus tell us that we are blessed when we feel poor? We are blessed when we are hungry. We are blessed when we weep and we're blessed when we are rejected. Jesus calls us that because he doesn't want us not to be happy, but he doesn't want us to be happy and joyful and loved and content and accepted for a moment. He wants us to be loved, accepted, cared for, protected from hardship, and free forever. And so Jesus says, you are blessed if you suffer here for a moment because you will have peace and joy and contentment for eternity. I'd like to read to you a, a poem that I found that I think illustrates what Jesus is saying here in a different way that can help us understand the beauty of what Jesus is telling us today. This is from, it's called The Valley of Vision, a Collection of Puritan Prayers and Devotions. Lord, high and holy, meek and lowly, thou hast brought me to the valley of vision. Where I live in the depths, but see thee in the heights. I'm hemmed in by mountains of sin, and there I behold thy glory. Let me learn by paradox that the way up is the way down, that to be low is to be high, that the broken heart is the healed heart, that the contrite spirit is the rejoicing spirit, that the repenting soul is the victorious soul, that to have nothing is to possess everything, that to bear the cross is to wear the crown, that to give is to receive, that the valley is the place of vision. Lord, in the daytime, stars can be seen from the deepest wells, and the deeper wells, the wells, the brighter thy stars shine. Let me find thy light in my darkness, thy life in my death. Thy joy in my sorrow, thy grace in my sin, thy riches in my poverty, thy glory in my valley. I love that last line. Let me find thy glory in my valley. That makes me think of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What is the psalmist saying, and what is this poem describing? It's describing that as the darker the night gets, you more clearly see the one light that shines in your sadness, in your despair, in your hunger, and in your poverty. 
When you realize the depth of sin that covers you and how terrible of a person you are when you have hurt everyone around you and caused so many terrible consequences to come into your life, what then happens? You are down on your knees and where must you look? Heaven. You must find your comfort and hope in what you do not yet hold in your hands because what is around you is desolation as you have with your own sinfulness destroyed the good things in your life. And you must look to God. Another picture it uses there is that the mountains of our sin force us to see only God's glory. The mountains of those sin are blocking off everything around you, kind of boxes in what you look at. And when I think of that picture, I think of when I lived in Montana and I think of all of the mountains all around that valley and that place really came alive as big sky country as I lived there because those mountains force you to think the sky looks bigger because of the mountain around me. Now think of that with a picture of the poem where the mountains are your sin. So what do you then see all the more as your sin increases and the hardships of this life increase and you see all of these barriers, all of this hardship building up around you and you think there is nothing that I can do. But then you turn to God and his words and you find there the beauty of who Jesus is and what he has done for you. And what does that sin do? It just makes the heavens larger. It makes God's mercy greater. You see all the more the beauty of who God is in your hardships today. For all these reasons, Jesus says you are blessed Not because those moments are enjoyable. No one likes feeling poor. No one truly enjoys feeling hungry. And no one wants to weep. We don't want to face death. We don't want to feel alone. We don't want to face our sin and the guilt that that brings and the consequences that we have caused in those that we love most. And yet Jesus knows that going through those things is a blessing for us because it forces us not to think that this life has all the answers and that we are okay. Because if we do, not because all rich people are terrible, not because it's good to laugh sometimes, not because having those other things that he says woe to aren't good things, but if we are always happy and satisfied in this life and we think we got everything under control, then we will come to the end of our moments, our days here, and we will spend eternity without God because we never face the reality of our sin, the pain that it causes others, and the reality that this world will end. Jesus' phrasing here is, what is better, to be blessed for a moment or to be blessed for eternity? To suffer for a moment or to suffer for eternity? Jesus can say all of this to you. He can say you are blessed and you can know it primarily because Jesus went through all of those things. So that you know with all certainty that those who put their trust in the Lord, who hang on to him and follow the light in your darkness, know that at the end of these days, at the end of our life, even in the darkest of moments in this life, that you have hope, not just a little hope, but a massive hope because Jesus went through all of these things so that you know you have eternal joy, peace, love, acceptance. Because you are blessed in his poverty. As he became man and gave up eternity, his crown of heaven, his sitting on a throne where he never had to go through any of this, he stepped down from this, he clothed himself in humility, he was mocked and beaten by human beings just like you, So that he could be as poor as possible to suffer for our sins. 
He was hungry. He, he was a human, so he had to go through the same needs as us, and he was hungry as the cross for his father's attention as he was separated from him. He wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus as he saw the devastation that our sin had brought upon his creation, that God himself, his father and him together had worked this beautiful creation that was corrupted by human beings in their sin, and he saw his friend die, and he wept at his grave. And he wept as he saw Jerusalem reject the good news that he was bringing. And he continues to weep for all those who reject the good news. And Jesus was excluded, he was insulted, and he was hated. And he died. But he did all of that to guarantee that he could say to you with full confidence at this moment as he tells his disciples before all of this happens that you are blessed because I will suffer. I will carry the woe of eternal suffering. I will die so that you may live. Where in the world is God? He's very near, close to you in every one of those situations where you feel poor, where you feel hungry, where you weep, and when you are rejected, Jesus is right there with you waiting for you to lean on him, to draw strength from him, and to rely on his promises so that you can get through the hardest of times in this life because they will end, and then you will be in endless joy with him forever. Just one more thing to just dwell on. I know it's hard to conceptualize heaven and eternal joy right now, especially when you are suffering, to think it will end and And I'll get past this so much so that I won't even be hurt by the hardships of today. But that is what Jesus promises. He doesn't just say that you will have heaven someday so you can make it through this, but he says that heaven someday will be so wonderful that you will no longer feel the effects of sin, of pain, of hunger. You will not even remember how much it hurts today. That can be hard to, to really grasp. But that is the beauty of what Jesus has won for you on the cross. You will be in heaven forever. You will be rich with the treasures of heaven and his mercy surrounded you as God dwells in your presence. You will never go hungry again because you will never have that need for for food, for nourishment, but also because he will fill you up with his presence. You will never weep again. Because God will have done away with sin and all of the causes of pain today in you and in the world and everywhere around you. The devil will be chained forever. You will never weep. Not then and not for the past hurts that are such deep scars today. You will be so filled with joy and peace and acceptance and love that in heaven you will be, have those things forever. That's why you're blessed, Christians. You have a hope that is ironclad, it is stored in heaven. No one can take that from you because Jesus has suffered for you. And you have a light that will guide you through this life and give you the courage to face even the hardest of times because you have a God who went through them with you and will continue to be with you and you will dwell in his house forever. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For you are with us and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May that bring you comfort today and tomorrow as you long for eternity with your God. Amen. Please rise.